Have you ever had an instance when setting up your journal just did not go your way? Well, that was pretty much the entire of this monthly setup for me. So many things went wrong, but we'll get to them as they come up. For the month ahead, the team with a capital T voted on a trees theme, but I'm not super good at actually drawing trees in terms of their branches and stuff and making it look kind of natural and not very stylized. So I decided to focus on the leaves of the trees instead. The leaf shapes that I've chosen are inspired by Ginkgo leaves, and while all the leaves have the same general shape, making them look organic was actually a lot simpler than I thought it was going to be. You effectively just start with the general outline of the leaf and stem, where the outer edge of the leaf kind of fits to a semicircle, and then go in and do all the internal detail lines with a finer pen. For minimal effort, it actually ends up looking very visually effective, so if you wanted to try out this theme for yourself, I do think that it is approachable for beginners. When pairing a leaves slash trees theme with November, your first thought might be autumn or fall, but in New Zealand it's actually spring, so I wanted to make sure that with this setup I wasn't using typically autumnal colours. It doesn't really fit the vibe of the season where I'm based. Instead I went with the classic combination of black and gold, where the gold primarily came from my gold watercolour paints. These are beautiful, I do not use them very often in my journal because I'm not much of a painter, and of course the paint was one of the issues that I ran into in this setup. Though it wasn't the paint's fault, it's certainly my fault. The column of leaves that I'm drawing down the center of this right hand page are going to be the edge of a Dutch door that we're going to put in. I really enjoyed having the tiered Dutch doors or the waterfall tabs in October, so I wanted to do this again for the month ahead. But before getting into making those Dutch doors, I had to sort out my monthly log, also known as the first major mistake in this setup. As you can see, I'm putting washi tape all over the page so I can make some headers for each of the days in the month. The first issue that we have here is that I really wanted this to be a very good quality of black. So I used a very inky black marker. This did cause some ghosting through to the other side of the page, not quite to the extent of bleed through, but we will get to that later. So that was one of the first issues. The second issue was that Jess drew out her calendar boxes wrong. Despite going in first and measuring up where I wanted the calendar to go, I completely missed the first day of the month. This meant that when it came to numbering the calendar, which I was doing with paint, which also takes a lot longer than just writing numbers out, I got about halfway through putting the numbers in and realized I don't actually have enough days of the month on here. It took me a second to figure it out, the way that I actually ended up figuring it out was just going and looking at a digital calendar for November. And after a little bit I decided the easiest option was going to be just cover over those headers with black paper. Which it would have been nice if I had have just done this initially rather than using the black marker because then I wouldn't have had that ghosting on the other side of the page. The other issue that I ran into when doing these numbers is that I'm not very good at painting especially not painting finely. So some of my numbers did end up a little bit blobular, but thankfully we covered that over with the paper, so it wasn't the worst thing in the world. But then of course, when I started to number the calendar again, I forgot that I don't have the first day of the month on here. So I stuffed up again and wrote the number one in, which I could turn into a two, so it wasn't the end of the world. But then when I went to number the subsequent days, my maths was off and I'm like, oh yeah, six plus seven is 11. That sounds about right. Spoilers, no, that should be 13. Thankfully, I didn't get too much further with my numbering before I realized my error, but this just re-highlighted really to me the importance for me to pencil things in before I start doing any of my setup with pen. That idea of measure twice, draw once or in this case, paint. So I think that takes our running total of stuff up counter to something like six, but all of those mistakes did get fixed except for not having the first day of the month on the calendar because I'd already put the decoration in underneath that Wednesday header, I just decided to leave it off. If there's anything super important on that first day, I'll either record it in my Outlook calendar or I'll put it on my future log. I love having an easy space filler in my layouts, so for this one I'm using dots to fill in any of the extra space around the ginkgo leaves. These are just a combination of full black dots and open circles that I'm doing with my Zig Clean Colored dot markers, and then the gold dots from the gold paint. I find this just helps to make things look a little bit balanced, especially where I've got some ginkgo leaves which are a little bit closer together compared to other ones, and it's also a really super easy decoration style that I can use on my daily and weekly logs when it comes to subsequent pages. An additional decorative element that I'm using is washi tape, which will also come in handy for some quick decoration for my daily logs. 
This one's from the washi tape shop and anything that I've used is linked in the description box. This one's from a set that has a bunch of different styles of waves and they're drawn in that kind of artistic style that is typical in Japanese art pieces. The style of which I thought matched well with the ginkgo leaf decoration. This one I'm just running down the left hand side of the spread. The excess tape that was hanging off the side of the page I'm putting in the back of my journal in what I'm calling the washi tape graveyard. This is effectively where I put any larger pieces of tape that I've cut off when I'm doing decoration in my journal. Just as a fun kind of way to capture those little extra pieces of tape. I'm trying to look at it as more of a fun decorative thing rather than a way to shame myself for quote wasting washi tape because otherwise those pieces really just would have ended up in the bin. Time to sort out our waterfall tabs or tiered dutch doors. For the first dutch door I want this cut around the shapes of the ginkgo leaves rather than just a straight edge but this leaves kind of a weird shape on the back side of the page. To make that side also look a little bit decorative I was going to use that washi tape again so I needed to go in and measure up where the edge of the dutch door was going to start and stop so that I could run that tape along the back side of the page before I did the cut. By putting the tape on before cutting it means that I don't have to cut twice like cut around the dutch door and then cut around the tape but it does require a little bit more pre-planning to make sure that you have the tape in the right places. When it came to cutting out around the ginkgo leaves though I opted for a craft knife rather than scissors just because I find I could be a little bit more precise with a craft knife. As satisfying as it is to see people cut out around an intricate dutch door with a craft knife all in one fell swoop or going in an uninterrupted line from the top to the bottom of the page that is not my reality when it comes to craft knife work. Instead for the most part I decided to cut them off in smaller pieces and remove it as I went. It doesn't make the process quite as aesthetically pleasing but it is a lot easier for me personally. I find that working with a craft knife in particular directions is easier than others so there was a lot of starting and stopping with my cutting to make sure that I was angling it in a way that felt comfortable. I do encourage you to do the same if you're going to be doing any kind of craft knife work in your journal because funnily enough the craft knife is sharp so we want you to be using using it in a direction that feels comfortable and feels safe so that you don't have any craft knife mishaps. Flipping over though and you can see that the back side of that dutch door has that decorative tape and I didn't have to cut it out twice because we'd already laid it down. On to the next dutch door and no I haven't gone mad I just wanted a ripped edge on this one that I could highlight with my gold paint. This kind of look reminds me of gemstones the type that have all of those different lines going through them and I saw Icy of Icy Studios do something similar in her journal and it looked absolutely gorgeous so I wanted to try it out for this month. For the dutch door that I'm working on here I've actually ripped it in roughly the same position as the one underneath it and that's because I'm going to be sticking an additional piece of paper along the edge of that dutch door to make it come out further from the spine. It might be a little bit hard to visualize what I mean by that but I'm sure it'll make more sense when we actually bring that additional paper in. At the moment I'm just going along the edge with my gold paint to kind of highlight where that edge is. We need to make sure that that paint is very dry before I put the page down again but now it's on to make that extension that I was talking about. About. For this one I'm going to be using blackout paper just from my Archer and Olive notepad and this is going to provide really good contrast to the ginkgo leaf dutch door that's going to sit on top of it. Kind of similar to the dutch door that you can see we have on a subsequent page. I've ripped the paper along both the left and right edges and I'm going to highlight both of those with the gold paint. This is so that I don't have any harsh straight edges on any of the decorative elements in the setup. I wanted the torn edges of the paper to match the torn edges of the washi tape to kind of match the imperfect edges that I have on the ginkgo leaves. To stick in the extra piece of blackout paper though I just ran some double sided tape along the very edge of the dutch door that's in the notebook and also along the opposite edge of the blackout paper itself. This was to make sure that it was very secure from both sides of the blackout paper so it's not going to feel loose from either side of the dutch door. I really like how sticking in this additional piece of paper means that on the underside of the dutch door we effectively have some decoration there because we've got that edge of the blackout paper peeking out the side. Now as the waterfall tabs are set up though it's time to start thinking about the other pages in my setup. The first of these is going to be my actions log. In October I had my actions log at the end of my monthly pages which wasn't so typical for me and I found that it didn't work as well having it there so I wanted to put it back in its more typical space up the front. For this one I've just left both sides of the page open because it is just a place to write out all of the tasks that I want to do in the month as related to my goals. Because we're not quite at the end of October yet I haven't done that goal planning process so once the header is in this layout is done and it's over the page and onto my meal planner and habit tracker. The meal planner is going on the left hand page and while in October I decided to expand my meal planner to include all of my meals of the day, for November I'm really just going to be focusing on dinner 
Dinner is the meal that we actually plan out in advance. And in particular, I wanna make sure that I am hopefully eating the meals that we plan as we planned them. So on the day that we plan them for and the actual planned meal. The general setup of that one is fairly straightforward. Outside of the title, we just have two columns, one to record what the planned meal is for each day of the month, and then one to record what we actually ate. If the meal was eaten as planned, I'll just put a tick in that log column. But if we ended up having something different, then I can record what we actually ate. The nice part about this is that I'll be able to see at a glance, how many days in the month did we eat what we planned to eat? How many days did we eat something different? And I'll also have an accurate record of what we were actually having for dinner. The habit tracker is gonna be set up in a similar way. So we have the numbers for each day of the month running down the left-hand side of the page, and then after this, we have a column for each of the habits that I'm gonna be tracking. When it comes to filling this in, I'm gonna have three different symbols to indicate whether the habit happened or didn't. So one symbol to indicate that it didn't happen, and then two other symbols to indicate when it did. These two symbols are based on the idea of having a low bar and a high bar for each of my habits. Where the low bar is effectively the smallest possible thing that I could do to fulfill that habit, and the high bar is more akin to what I actually want to be doing for the habit. To write in those habits though, I've just rotated my journal and put them in using the shortest possible phrasing I could think of, just so then it would fit nicely underneath my habit tracker header. This is one of those instances where I wish I had have done more planning in advance because I would have just put the header on the right hand side of the page rather than the left, just so I had a little bit more space to write in what those habits were. But along the right hand side of the page, I also wanted to include a key. This is a space to indicate what those three symbols are, so not having done the habit, hitting the low bar and hitting the high bar, and then also write in what the high bar and low bar are. While I could probably remember these for the month in question, having them written out, one, means that I'm gonna be able to know what I was talking about in subsequent months or in the future, and two, it also means that I have in black and white what my expectations are for each of those habits. It means I can't trick myself into thinking that I met the high bar when really it was a low bar day. As mentioned, I do wish that I had to plan this page out a little bit more in advance before going in with the pen. I do normally do that for my setups, but for both October and November, I just haven't. In both cases, I got a little bit impatient and just wanted to get on with the setup, which means that when it came to putting in my key, I didn't actually have enough space on the page to put in both the high bar and the low bar for each of the habits. To fix this though, I just wrote the high bar down directly onto the page, and then I put the low bar on a tip-in that I could just open up and then see the full key. This tip-in was made just using an off-cut from Making the Dutch Doors, and then stuck in with a combination of white washi tape and just regular sticky tape. On to the next layout though, this one is going to be for my work calendar. Now, my first iteration of this layout I tried in October, and it didn't quite work out the way I wanted it to. The way I'd set it up didn't really lend itself to the purpose that I had in mind for the calendar, so I'm changing up the style just a little bit in November. This one is going to have a calendar layout that we're drawing here on the left-hand page, and then on the right is going to be a running list of all of the things that I need to do for work. The way I'm going to be using the calendar though is to indicate what type of work I'm doing on each day. I really wanna get better at both time blocking and task batching so that I'm not doing all different types of work on every single day of the week, rather having something like a filming day and an editing day, or maybe a couple. While on the monthly log, I had some ghosting from the pen that I used for the header, I did foolishly try and use the pen again on this work calendar header, and that one ended up going through the page enough that I would consider it bleeding. This was mighty unfortunate, but not anything that a white sticker couldn't fix. And thankfully, I stopped to check before I colored in the whole header, meaning that the mistake that I had to fix was a lot smaller. At the bottom of the calendar though, I have some little boxes which I can use as a color key for the different types of work that I'm recording. And in terms of that running list on the right hand page, this one is gonna be set up using the Alistair method. So columns going down the left hand side, which relate to all of the different steps in working on a piece of content. And then the larger section on the right is where I can write in what those content pieces are. My plan is to separate this into my YouTube content at the start and then my team member perks after this. And then any other content goes at the bottom. I'm hoping that this style ends up working better for me compared to what I had in October. And speaking of October, it wouldn't be one of my plan with me's if we didn't have a look at how the current month was going. For October, I went with a pastel space theme, and while I'm very much enjoying how each of these tapes work together and how shiny and gorgeous they are, I am very excited for the high contrast in November. But similar to what we've got in November, we have the calendar layout and then the cover page. 
but different this month was that I combined my cover page with something a little more functional, being my projects list. I did quite like having the monthly log up front and center, so we've kept that for November, but the projects list is being retired, and I'm instead putting that with my work schedule that we just set up. After this, I then had my habit tracker, and the high bar, low bar has been working really well for this. I didn't think that I needed to take up two separate pages for it again in November though, so I have combined it to one page. And similar, I have made my meal log just the one page as well. So in October, we had breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks, and then also the planned section. In November, it's one page, it's planned versus actual for dinner. Not to say that this isn't working for me, it's just in November, I plan on being quite busy, and I think that having to record all of my meals is gonna be a little bit too much of an ask. Flipping over, I then had the first iteration of that work schedule. This one didn't really work out the way that I wanted it to though, so I've tweaked it a little bit for November. The idea I had for this one is that this was kind of the timeline side so I could show when each piece of content was coming out and when I planned to do each of these different work types for each of those pieces of content. Similarly I was going to use this calendar to kind of map out which types of work I was doing on which days. It just didn't really work out that way. So I've streamlined my key in November, so I have less things that I'm working with in terms of recording. And rather than doing the timeline view, I instead have the different pieces of work that need to be done for each piece of content, and I can schedule it in by writing the day number in each of these columns. Then I can just use a gray dot marker over the top to say when that thing has been done. Flipping over though, after this we have my actions list and my monthly review. As I mentioned, having my actions list at the end of my monthly pages has been a little bit weird. Usually it would be up front and center, so I've done that again for November. And I was trialing not writing out too many actions on the actions list, mainly so I knew just what the next task or next few tasks were. But I kind of missed having the full actions list at the start of the month, so I'm going to go back to a system that works with that. The monthly review is working well, so we will have one of those in November. And then after this, we're into my weekly slash daily logs. So weekly in this kind of panel section and then daily in each of the boxes. This has been working really well for me, though I don't really like having to rule in the boxes as I go. So I'm probably going to go for a not ruled version when it comes to my November dailies. But we've got some little notes lists in here along with just daily boxes and whatnot. This is where we're up to at the moment and then I have a couple of extra pages that I can use for the rest of the month. With November being the second last month of the year, it's time to start thinking about big end of year projects. Or maybe I probably should have started thinking about it earlier, but one of those projects is going to be Vlogmas. For Vlogmas this year, we are again doing a video per day for the entire of December. And while these technically aren't vlogs, I'm just going with the term Vlogmas. I think it's a fine name. And I have already started planning out some of our Vlogmas videos. So if you want to make sure that you don't miss out on those videos when they release, be sure that you're subscribed to the channel. On the right hand page though, this is going to be my reflection space for the month, so just the same categories that I had in October. Wins, challenges, any lessons learned, memories, things I'm looking forward to, things I'm nervous about, a review of my finances, relisting which goals I worked on for the month, and a space to review what I did or didn't like about my journal for the month. I have loved filling in my review pages this year and it's been really satisfying getting to go back to them when I do things like my quarterly review and they're certainly going to come in handy when I do my end of year review as well. Having a look at the pages that we set up in this video, I am super excited to get in and use these layouts. I love the black and gold, the contrast is exactly what I needed, and I think that the changes that I made compared to my October layouts are really going to help me get more done and manage the amount of stuff I have going on in the month ahead. The new version of my work calendar is one that I am particularly excited for, and I am super eager to just get in and start sorting out my Vlogmas plans. As said, if you want to make sure that you don't miss out on those Vlogmas videos, be sure you're subscribed to the channel. Otherwise, this video in the top left is one that YouTube thinks that you'll like. Click or tap on that one and I'll see you over there.